Hello! Last time I spoke about Halloween Horror Nights 21, a couple of months ago, uh, I was joking. It was all a big put-on. It was all secrets of Halloween Horror Nights 21 revealed. And, uh, of course, it was these three videos were posted on April 1st. Dead giveaway as to what was really going on. And to further make it a dead giveaway, I called it All Secrets of Halloween Horror Nights 21 Revealed. The last time I used that sort of wording, last year, All Secrets of Halloween Horror Nights 20 Revealed, if you recall, which in fact is my most popular YouTube video with over 2,000 hits, uh, I had a rather tongue-in-cheek speculation about Halloween Horror Nights 20 where I pulled out a crystal ball and said such things as, oh, there will be houses and scare zones and there'll be icons at the event and, and, and there'll be overpriced drinks and, and things that were bloody obvious, of course, there would be as there always are. That was the sort of thing I did then, very tongue-in-cheek. And so I thought that it would be pretty much well known that I was being silly and doing an April Fool's prank. Of course, Many people had not seen the uh, videos at the time and uh, came across them later. Even those who did see them at the time, some people took me a little more seriously because they weren't quite sure if I was joking or not. And those who came across the video later maybe failed to notice that they had been posted on April 1st and thinking they had been posted seriously at another date uh, got rather nervous and even to this day I occasionally will get messages quite urgent and, and uh, uh, quite urgent and uh, concerned about things like oh that I joked about it being 18 and up only and people would say oh my god no I'm only 15 years old and I can't go to Halloween Horror Nights what can I do and I have to reassure these nice people that yes indeed uh, the event is all ages. I was playing a joke, sorry. Uh, and so, but if you recall, immediately after I posted that video, and uh, the, the, the one for Halloween Horror Nights 20 last year, I then followed up with actual speculation about the event. Whilst I was uh, imbibing in a cocktail and was kind of silly and a little bit tipsy at the time. Uh, and so in the spirit of that, I will now post the first video of actual speculation for Halloween Horror Nights 21. Not a joke, this is actual speculation that I'm actually speculating about the event. And furthermore, I'm completely sober. I haven't had anything to drink stronger than Diet Mountain Dew, so don't worry. I may be a little bit buzzed and hyper from the caffeine, but that's about it. I'm not inebriated in any way. So, with a clear mind and a clean conscience, let's talk about Halloween Horror Nights 21. Uh, since I have a clean conscience, I have, to, I have to make a little disclaimer. There's some things that I actually know about the event that I cannot reveal. And that is because I've been told things from many different interesting sources who have information about the event, some of whom say, don't tell anyone this, but I'm telling you so you know this, and I'm not going to betray confidences. Also, there's some things that I've been told that if I were to reveal this information, it would reveal my source. And uh, I don't want to burn a source, especially if they're in a situation where they could get in trouble for revealing it openly to the general public. So I can't burn my sources or betray such people, even if they haven't said don't tell. I know that if I do tell about something that uh, only someone who had been there and they would know, figure out who it was, and they get in trouble, I can't do that. And there are also some sources who are revealing information uh, to people with the express understanding that they must not reveal the source and I have to be very cautious about giving any information that would cause them to get upset and not and then they might not give out any further information and that would not just affect me but other people who are also taking advantage of such interesting information and I would not only uh, cause me not to get any more information but several other people wouldn't get that information either and so I have to be very cautious about all of that uh, when I give this speculation. That being said, what do we actually know about Halloween Horror Nights 21? I'll talk about what we actually know, then I'll go into uh, interpolating and, and analyzing and coming up with some speculations and talk about other speculations that are out and about right now and 
how uh, and my opinion on how uh, accurate those speculations might be and what I myself think about them, uh, so to speak. So, what do we actually know about the event? Well, first, the first thing we learned several months ago during the design forum uh, when TJ Manorino uh, stated quite explicitly the event is to be held at Universal Studios Florida. Now that seems to be a given and a lot of people think well of course it's at Universal Studios Florida they're not going to ever go back to Islands of Adventure at any time ever again. Um, there are those who are some of us people here are, are Halloween Horror Nights pundits you know the Bill O'Reilly's and the uh, <clears throat> and the, uh, um, uh, what's his name, on the other side, he's no longer on MSNBC, now he's going to be on, uh, on, uh, on the uh, Al Gore channel, channel, uh, Oberman, yes, the, the Keith Obermans and Bill O'Reilly's of Halloween Horror Nights who have their own very strong opinions about everything and they're sure they're always right. No, I'm not that kind of a pundit. I'm more like Jon Stewart, <laughs> if you might, a little tongue-in-cheek, a little silly, but at the same time trying to be fair to some, although I may lean to the left, I try to be fair uh, when I deal with those on the right, or whatever, uh, if you want to, political terms, what that might be. But in my, I want to point out that um, even though there's a whole big number of reasons, logistical, economic, that would be very challenging for them to ever put it back at Islands of Adventure. Whenever this is brought up to the people, to TJ and Mike Aiello and all the others, uh, they always give this answer. They say that every year they always look at both parks and determine where they're going to hold the event. They always do this. And they, whenever they say, well, you'll never do it at ILOA ever again, they say, oh no. We, we don't say never, we say never say never, and so there's always an open possibility that someday it may return either in part or entirely at IOA. Now, this may not happen for many, many years, or it may happen next year during uh, 2012. I mean, think about it, 2012 will be the 10th anniversary of Islands of Fear. It would be a good year to do it at Iowa. Now, this is not based on anything I've heard or no. That's just an idea that's in my head. And the possibility that it may eventually come back to Iowa is still out there. They never have precluded that possibility. I just want to stress that. But it was it was confirmed that it will be at Universal Studios Florida. Of course, you all know this now. It's on the website and everything else. So we do know that. We also know that uh, this year, for the first time in a few years, we don't have the Roman numerals. It's not XXI, <laughs> as, as, I, as I formed a whole big scenario based on that, you know, explicit, extreme, in, in, intense, all of that was a silly joke. No, it's going to be in the Arabic numerals, the decimal system, 21. Yes, that's how it's going to be written this year, 21, uh, 2 one. And that fits in with the whole blackjack dealer and the and the and the uh, ace of spades and all of that that we see on the website. You know, we see the blackjack theme. We see 21. Okay, it gets the clue. Okay, it has something to do with cards and games of chance. We know the overall theme has some connection to gambling, games of chance, playing cards, the game of blackjack, probably, or, or gambling in general. Maybe a casino or a gambling house of some sort because we have that catchphrase already on the website, nobody beats the house, which may end up being the actual uh, phrase connected to how in Hornet 21 nobody beats the house, perhaps, perhaps not. We don't know that yet, but that's a phrase that's already out there, so we have that idea about the theme already, more or less. We also <clears throat> know that there will be at least eight houses. We know this because the permits uh, the building permits were released back in May, and uh, this being Florida Sunshine State laws, these are in the public domain, and we can see these, these permits and actually look at them and see what's planned. So we know that at least eight locations, and we know what the locations are for haunted houses. The same locations we've had for the past couple years. Soundstage 22, where last year they had uh, the Wolfman, and that was not 2009. Last year they had the legendary Truth Wyandotte Estate House was in that location. That will be used again this year. Soundstage 23A and B, to both, uh, Soundstage 22 has two houses as it has the past couple of years, 
and uh, the last, past several years. Last year, of course, we had uh, the Cyclosceropy Echoes of Shady Brook and Hades Gates of Ruin in that location. Those will both be utilized for houses this year again. The Disaster Overflow Q area, where last year we had Zombie Geddon, will be used for a house this year. The Jaws Q area, where last year was the Orphanage Ashes to Ashes, will be used for a house again this year. The Parade Building, where last year we had Hallowed Past, is being used for a house again this year. Sprung Tent Number 1 and Sprung Tent Number 2, the World Expo um, Warehouses, which we call Sprung Tent 1 and 2, where last year we had Catacombs. Black Plague Rising and Havoc Dogs of War both will be used for houses again this year. So we have eight houses in the same locations we've had for the past couple of years. So we know where the houses will be. There's also an intriguing possibility. Uh, the way the permits are worded uh, have led some to conclude that there may be either two houses in the parade building or, or possibly one house with two different run-throughs which we haven't seen since, I think, 1998, uh, when, when the Frytanic in the disaster, uh, actually back then the earthquake Q area, had two separate runs. Now, it's been a while since we've had that idea. Uh, oh, um, no, I'm, no, I'm, yeah, that was 98, yes. It's been a while since we've had that sort of thing, but, uh, and also that same year there was, uh, uh, I, I'm pretty, yes, there was the Museum of Horror that year as well, also had two runs. So we had the two run the two run concept, which was quite popular in the early 90s, uh, from 95 I think, or 90. Well, actually, beginning with uh, the first time they ever did that was in 90, uh, 93 with the uh, um, the the uh, uh, boneyard. But uh, so that concept was quite popular in the in the early to mid to late 90s, and it hasn't been done ever since. Well, they might bring that back this year. They may not. Again, this is just based on some ideas, based on the wording of things and some of the codes that they have in uh, the uh, and the permits have led some to conclude this, but we don't really know for for certain. There may only be one really big house in the in the uh, in the in the parade building. Now, really big house. I can confirm from a source that all the houses will be longer this year. Oh, there's Bob. Hello, Bob. Nice to see Bob in the in, in the uh, in the video for a change. She's been absent for a while, but she decided to pop back in, say hello, uh, Kitty. She may jump up here. I don't know what she's going to do next. She may go up on her her castle, uh, and go take a nap, cat nap, cat nip. She may bite my feet to try to get my attention. But anyway, um, so nice to have Bob make a cameo. Well, let's continue. Yes, all the houses will be longer this year. I've heard that is confirmed. The soundstage houses, they're using up more space in the sound stages and the parade building and they've extended structures out from the sprung tent and they've extended where the facade will be in the jaws queue so you actually may get another room in all of the houses so the houses may be a bit longer and a bit more in each house which is pretty cool actually. Another thing we know is that this will be the longest event in the history of Halloween Horror Nights. It begins September 23rd, ends October 31st on select nights, and if you add them up, you find out it's 25 nights. Previously, the, the, long, the most nights that it ever had was 24 nights, so now it's one night more than the previous record. So 25 nights is, is more nights for Halloween Horror Nights than we've ever had before. So that we know, too, for a fact. Yes. Uh, we also know that uh, we have a new showrunner for the event, Mike Aiello, who no longer is just writing and producing the Bill and Ted show. Now he will be in charge of the whole event, overseeing it. We also know that uh, Patrick Brayard, I may not have pronounced that correctly, maybe Braylord or whatever, uh, is, is writing the Bill and Ted show this year. There will be a Bill and Ted show this year, as there always has been since 1992. Bill and Ted is coming back. We do know that. So all of that is what we know. Uh, as far as some of it goes. We know there'll be another show, a second show, possibly a third, we don't know for a fact, but we do know a second show will happen this year as well. Uh, where that will be located, we don't yet know. It might be in the Beetlejuice stage. It may be set up in a stage uh, in the Mel's Diner area because that area is not being used for Scare Zone this year. And thus, if that's freed up, they may very well set up a stage like it did in years past. We haven't seen one there since Carnival of Carnage in 2007. Yes. Hello, Bob. She's scratching at my chair and wants me to 
pet her tail, her little bitty bob tail. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so, we also know because briefly, oh, I'm running out of time, so I have to go to part two. <laughs>